the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Joyous feast. Strasnikov. Kali Eoti. This morning's parable fits really nicely with the epistle reading, the parable from the Gospels. Knowing that since today is the day of salvation, that the Lord has brought it about so that every day from his resurrection is this day of salvation and that no one is barred from entering in. St. Paul says, we put no impediment in anyone's way. If anyone would hear the gospel and follow after Christ, let him come. Let him come immediately on this day because today is the day of salvation. So there's no impediment and there's no limit to the mercy and compassion and love that we are to share with those around us. I want you to think, I think frequently we, we listen to this parable and we think about our talents in terms of, I don't know, our natural abilities, right? You think about like Connor can sing, Mary can sing, and her sister. I don't know, Anna Marie, can you sing? <laughs> You're higher. <laughs> Dennis can sing. Um, and so you think about stuff like that. Or maybe your aptitude, your intellect, your aptitude for study. Or your, your business acumen. You know, some of the members of our parish are very good at um, managing and running business. This isn't what the parable is talking about. The talent that's given to the slaves is not their own. It belongs to God. Ultimately, when you consider this parable and think about it in the context of the Gospel of Matthew, and just before this, there's the parable of the foolish and the wise virgins. So the virgins that had their oil and the virgins that didn't have oil. And then when the Lord comes unexpectedly, the master comes unexpectedly, and the virgins without any oil say, give us some of your oil. And they say, we, there's no time. And we don't have enough. You have to go and buy some. But there's no time. And the church fathers identified that oil Many of them, in interpreting that parable, speak of how the oil is the oil of charity. It's the oil of mercy. It's the oil of love. It's the oil of compassion. And so this parable, seen in the context, the talents, what are they? It's not so much that we can sing. It's the fact that we've received the mercy of God. It's the fact that we've received the word of God. It's the fact that on this day, the Lord has come to us and said, Today is the day of salvation. Come and follow me. But there was one man in the parable who received this word. And yet, what does he say? I knew you to be harsh, reaping where you haven't sown, collecting, you know, where you haven't winnowed anything. And so I went and hid your talent in the ground. What is this like? It's like another parable in the Gospels where the one man receives forgiveness for so much. When he receives, you remember, he receives like a thousand, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or a million dollars. He's forgiven just because he asks. And then he goes out and he finds his brother and he starts choking him to death for a paltry sum, for a few dollars. Right after he had just received that forgiveness of all of that debt. That 
is symbolized, that type of behavior, that type of attitude is symbolized in today's parable by taking the word of the Lord, by taking the gift of God, by taking the mercy of God and his love and compassion and burying it in the ground. Why? He could have said, if we change the terms in the parable and said that the master, you know, if you think of the master as being the Lord himself, what is he saying? He's saying, I think that you're like Zeus. I think that you're out to get me. I think that you have no mercy and no compassion. And so I took what you gave me and I buried it in the ground because I will not share it with anybody else because I am going to hold on to it for myself so that I can give you back what you had. Mother Maria Skopsova talks about a perversion of the ascetical life in some of her writings about different religious types or ways of being that make their appearance within the church. And one of them is a distortion of the ascetical life that turns it into something that's all about me, all about keeping myself safe, all about looking out for myself, all about doing all of these things, fasting, praying, coming to church, giving alms, not out of genuine love or for compassion, but just for the sake of the self, just for the sake of earning a reward, just for the sake of keeping oneself intact. That is the reality of what happens when we, when we do that. It's symbolized in today's parable by taking the gift of God that's been given to us and burying it in the ground. And so instead of that, we ought to take what he's given us and go out and share it with others. If God has shown us compassion, we ought to go out and show even more compassion as far as we can outdo God's compassion, but we can struggle. The St. Paul says, you know, that you should struggle to outdo one another in doing good to one another. So we can struggle to do that, to actually take all that we've been given. And within the Gospels, paradoxically, one could say, and this is the parable kind of reveals something that you see over and over again in the Gospels, and we saw it last week with Zacchaeus compared to the rich man. So you have the rich young man that's kept the commandments and he goes away from the Lord sad and you have Zacchaeus who hasn't kept any of the commandments and salvation comes to his house. In the parable, Zacchaeus is the one who's been given five talents. He's been given an overabundance of God's mercy and grace. And as soon as he receives it, he immediately starts trading with it. He immediately starts multiplying it. He immediately starts giving it to others. He doesn't hold on to anything for himself. Whereas the other rich young man that has lived his entire life in fulfillment of the commandments, it's only given that one talent of grace, of compassion. And yet, after having living after having lived his life in the church, fulfilling the commandments, seeking to observe the will of God, he has that one thing and he's unwilling to share it. And you see how that happens over and over and over again, that the tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners enter the kingdom of heaven before you and you yourselves will not enter it because you have this one thing and you're so stingy about it, about sharing compassion and mercy and love and grace with those around you. 
but within and this is why within the tradition we have to cultivate and seek and cry out to God for a genuine broken heart for a genuine contrite heart which that word contrition has to do with something that's hard being broken to pieces and ground up we have to seek this and cry out to God for it so that as we humble ourselves as we put ourselves in the place of the sinner his mercy and compassion and grace abounds more and more and more for us and we become less and less afraid of sharing it with others of giving it away because we know that the love of God, we come to know that the love of God is inexhaustible. And we come to know that when we come face to face with the depth of our own sinfulness. But the more that we run away from that acknowledgement, from that confession, from being able to see the depth of our sinfulness, the more that we have so little participation in the grace of God. Or it comes to us in, in such small ways and we actually start to think that God is stingy and merciless and just takes what he wants when he wants it without a care or any concern for us or for anyone else around us. So we better bury what we have and hide. So may we not be people who hide, who disfigure our calling, but who recognize and cry out to God to reveal to us the ways that we have sinned, that we confess the ways that we have sinned, and ask for His grace and His mercy. Because as in the parable, that I referenced before, he says to the man, he says, I forgave you all that debt just because you asked me. That was all. You just asked. I didn't make you jump through any hoops. I didn't make you do anything extreme. I just told you just to ask. And so may we be people who ask and receive that great store of grace and then share it with others, never keeping a tight fist around compassion and mercy for others. Amen. Amen.